Hey guys, I'm just starting right now in just uh, two minutes, setting up everything, all right? Okay, hi everyone. Every, every time I want to start this on time, there's some hiccup or the other. I uh, hope you're doing all right. And uh, yep, 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 yep. Hmm. All right. Okay, so what are we doing today? We're doing a very important chapter. I'd be, I, I hope you guys can hear me. Those joining on me on Zoom can hear me loud and clear. I hope you guys can. All right, so, all right. So today we're gonna to look at more manageable part of moles and calculation. Yeah, mm -hmm. yep, 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 yep. Okay, I'm gonna share my screen also. Uh, let me do that here, does that work? And, uh, yeah, you guys get to see two separate screens, so let me remove that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. So, Arisha, they're on YouTube. If so far, everything is on YouTube. Yeah. Everything so far is on YouTube. You can get all the, previ the, the previous lecture of moles on YouTube and everything else in the next couple of days. We're gonna put them all on YouTube. All right. Okay. 
But the previous three lessons are on YouTube, by the way. We'll make a playlist also and put everything there. So what are we doing today? We're going to be talking about masses and moles. That's the crux of the conversation today. And um, how we can use moles as a tool to solve for a lot of questions that come in MCQs and past paper structured questions. That's what we're looking at. And then I had already given you the basic principles of behind how we came up with the idea of moles. But again, if you were, I'll repeat it. If you don't understand the basic principles, the philosophy behind which we came up with this, it's okay. We'll get back to it also, also a bit later. All right. That's the um, game going forward. Now, so what are we looking at? Now, when you were looking at moles last time and uh, what we did was we saw, uh, I gave you an understanding of the term, the Avogadro's number and where it came from. It came from our need, our need to have moles, uh, uh, to have a measuring unit that I can take out in the lab. That's the need where moles comes from. And uh, for example, if you could just give me a second, a second. So before I just make sure that I can start on time. All right, so, okay. What was I saying? Yeah. So if you re recall that there was a difference between relative masses and actual masses, like I give you the example of one atom of carbon. Now you can represent its mass in two different units, the relative unit and the relative unit was units were generally AMU, but its relative mass was 12. And the actual mass for one atom in grams was two times 10 to the power of minus, uh, what was it, uh, 23? I forgot, I actually did forget and um, yeah, yeah, that was it. And so this number was really small for us to use. But what we discovered was that if I take not one atom of carbon, but if I took six times 10 to the power 23 atoms of carbon, if I were, instead of taking one atom of carbon, if I took that many atoms of carbon, their actual mass in grams was 12 grams, which was the same numerical uh, unit number or the same number as the relative mass. But one atom was not 12 grams. One atom of carbon is a very small number. And it's own, and you will never use this. You will never use the actual mass. So I just gave it to you to make you to remember that one atom of carbon isn't 12 grams. One atom of hydrogen isn't one gram. One atom of hydrogen is one atomic mass unit. One atom of carbon is 12 atomic mass units, meaning one atom of carbon was 12 times heavier than what? Heavier than? You guys remember? Then an atom of hydrogen. Hence, its mass is 12. It's 12 times heavier than hydrogen. Remember the, the initial the initial scale was with hydrogen, not with anything else. And that's the idea. The initial scale was with hydrogen. Yeah? Anyways, so that's where we had. Okay. Now, on the other hand, yeah. Okay, there's one thing I forgot to, to do, which was very bad of me, is, yeah. Okay, in one second. Okay, yeah, sorry, people are wondering why. Yes, Wasif, and I don't wanna answer it right now. This is an actual class for wool level class, no right, sorry. 
where was i yes uh wasif yes i can explain why i'm taking a class in moles of ao levels right now wasif and also if you people want to take the questions the questions i'll be answering is the one i'm taking on in the zoom link that i've already shared earlier but right now i'm continuing this class right now okay so somebody's asked a question mm not carbon 12 abdul moiz it eventually it became one one atom of hydrogen became what we now call 1/12th of carbon 12 but remember it's 1/12th of carbon 12 which is the mass of a hydrogen atom all right now you see that idea this is this is what we had so now what this means is guys two things that come across here all right okay so this is called the avogadro's number avogadro's constant and this is what makes one mole so one mole of anything is this many moles of particles all right and so which means is that one mole of carbon is 12 grams and the basic idea simply becomes this if uh, the relative mass of hydrogen is 1 then means the one mole of hydrogen atoms is 1 gram if the relative mass relative mass of sodium is 23 the one mole of sodium atoms are which is by the way na if you didn't realize is 23 grams and one mole is 6 times 10 to the power 23 approximately atoms and today this term is called a special name now the relative masses are also known as ar at relative atomic mass but the mass of one mole of a substance is technically called molar mass that's the first term we will get introduced to today molar mass molar mass is the mass of one mole of a substance okay now the beauty is no so the relative mass is equal to one mole of each substance no the mole is as many number of particles that gives the mass as the same mathematical number as the relative atomic mass in grams so it's not it's the mathematical number is the same its value isn't the same so relative mass of 1 and 1 gram isn't the same is is that mole is as many particles that tells me that i will get 1 gram of hydrogen so there is a relationship it is to match the mathematical number not the quantity i know it's difficult to comprehend what does it mean but and it it's a, it's a, it's a very philosophical distinction that i'd like people to make it's important to to make that distinction with everybody all right and so we have that now where was i so yeah so uh, what you need to understand is that molar mass is the term so once you start understanding molar mass you start understanding the question start to solve it so the avogadro's constant of all elements will be the one mole will be the same but the mass will be different sad i think what sad has said everybody should hear and that's absolutely right he said that so the avogadro's constant for all elements will be the same yes hence is called the avogadro's constant so one mole of let's say hydrogen is 6 times 10 to the power 23 atoms of hydrogen but its mass is 1 gram one mole of carbon is also 6 times 23 atoms of carbon but its mass of 1 mole is 12 grams all right then 1 mole of let's say 
for the sake of arguing calcium is also this many atoms of calcium but because calcium's mass now how would you find the mass of one mole of calcium well simply speaking there is a relationship between the mass of one mole and the ar for example the hydrogen is mass number of one carbon is mass number of 12 calcium is mass number of 40 so therefore the mass of one mole is 40 grams so what is a mole a mole is as many particles that gives me the same mass as the relative atomic mass but in grams that's how we got the number this value 6 times 10 to the power of 23 Isotopes are different. Isotopes are not this. You've done isotopes earlier, Moise. This isn't isotopes. All right. Does it make sense? Okay. Then. All right. What I just said is that the what you need to know is one mole of everything is the same number of particles, but their masses vary. And what do they vary to? They they the mass of one mole of anything is the same mathematical number as the average atomic mass, one. But that is in grams. So if the relative mass of hydrogen is one the molar mass is one gram so the molar mass of hydrogen is one gram in fact the unit for molar mass is one gram per mole that means every mole of hydrogen is one gram but the ar of hydrogen is simply one so for example for calcium for carbon the molar mass so you can say the molar mass of carbon is 12 grams per mole. That means every mole of carbon is 12 grams. Okay. Yes, the average is found through isotopes. That's the only thing. So the number is the same, absolutely. But the units are different. So molar mass is 12 grams per mole. and But the AR of carbon is simply 12. It could be a different unit. AMU when you have no unit again AMU is just a relative unit so that's what I was banking on okay let me just scroll this down right here let me take this more below okay so this is what I was talking about let me take this here now so I hope this makes some sense now separating we'll see the only way to, to make this maybe easier is if we do a few more examples again the term I want to talk about is molar mass molar mass in this case of calcium is 40 grams per mole now granted many teachers don't teach this concept of molar mass because you can mathematically solve it because molar mass has the same numerical value as AR but you're saying is that the AR value of an element is there mole but in moles it is one huh what no one I don't understand your question all I'm saying is the mass of one mole of a substance has the same numerical value as the AR but its units are gram per mole and it's not like it was by luck that the value was the same we, we actually found out how many atoms did it take for so basically what we did was we found out how many atoms of calcium it took whose total mass was, the ex was 40 grams and why 40 grams? Because 40 was his AR. Hence, we said 40 grams. So the molar mass is really also known as the atomic mass. But atomic mass is, is what you get in the periodic table. So the periodic table has atomic mass because that is for one atom. It, this numerical similarity applies to the same atom. So AR and MR were the same or different things. No, AR, Saad, is for atoms. 
एम आर इज फॉर मॉलिक्यूल्स एंड रिमेंबर हु हु डू वी हैव मॉलिक्यूल्स फॉर वी ओनली हैव मॉलिक्यूल्स फॉर कोवेलेंटली बॉन्डेड कंपाउंड्स ए आर इज फॉर ऑल एटम्स एंड इन फैक्ट द ए आर एंड एम आर फॉर मेनी एलिमेंट्स इज डिफरेंट सो फोर्टी ग्राम्स ऑफ कैल्शियम इज वन मोल ऑफ कैल्शियम यस नॉट वन एटम ऑफ कैल्शियम वन मोल ऑफ कैल्शियम एंड दैट्स वॉट वी रियली वॉन्टेड टू डू इन लाइफ वॉट मुनाफ इज सेंग नोमान इज दैट सो यू सेंग दैट इफ आई हैव फोर्टी ग्राम्स ऑफ कैल्शियम आई हैव वन मोल ऑफ कैल्शियम एब्सोलूटली सो टमोरो आई हैव एटी ग्राम्स ऑफ कैल्शियम आई नो दैट्स टू मोल्स ऑफ कैल्शियम एंड वाट डज दैट मैटर बिकॉज इफ आई नो ईच मोल इज हाउ मच which is each mole is this many particles the avogadro's number of particles so i know k if i were to weigh out 80 grams in the lab for calcium i know that is uh 1.2 times 10 to the power of 24 atoms of calcium that's how many calcium that is literally 12 with 23 zeros 3, 6 9 12 15 18 19 20 this many atoms of calcium so that's the beauty of it i can now basically what i'm saying is if i were to go to the lab put calcium on a mass balance and get 80 grams of calcium i know exactly how many atoms it has and that's the use of moles that without moles and avogadro's number i could not know how many atoms do i have in 80 grams that's how i got that Does it make sense? It is. It is very, very interesting. This is because it's a man-made number. We wanted to find the number, for example, of atoms of calcium that give the same mass because we knew calcium's AR was forty, atomic mass. well it gets easier the more you do it for example for example uh give me an element uh let's say iron now iron is atomic mass is 56 that's pretty large now what I, when i see this in the pr table i know that the ar of iron is 56 that means the relative atomic mass of one atom is 56 but what i can also know is that therefore one mole of iron atoms will have will have a mass of have a mass of how much 56 grams which means iron is 56 grams per mole that's the shortest way of saying it iron is 56 grams per mole because every mole of iron is 56 grams and i even know how many atoms is one mole don't we we know one mole is this many atoms so this many atoms of iron have a mass of 56 exactly so if i have 56 grams of iron how many moles do i have of iron because that's what i want to know now i have one mole so if i have 5.6 grams of iron can you find out how many moles of iron is that if 56 grams is one mole 5.6 grams is how many moles so monaf very simple if one mole of iron is 56 grams two moles of iron is how many grams 56 times Does it make sense? You could do a ratio, yeah, simple using ratio. Does it make sense? Any sense? Maybe. But Q and A is easier for me to read. Okay. Now, okay. How about this? Look again. So, 
so one mole of yes 0.1 absolutely so if I say one mole of sodium has mass of mass of 23 grams all right so two moles of sodium have how much mass well two times 23 right 10 moles of sodium exactly 230 yep and a thousand moles of sodium is 23 into a thousand which is 23,000 grams if anybody knows that's actually 23 kilograms so if I pick up a 23 kilogram block of sodium it is literally this many moles and you might wonder man, moles kya karunga? what will I do with moles Our moles se kuch karenge, but you know what a mole represents and so if you ever need to you can even convert this into number of atoms because you know how much a mole is won't you Do you know? Because you see, everybody has lifted kilograms. We can rate two kilograms. 23 kilos, yes, it's pretty heavy, but just for the, just, you know, if I take a 23 block, like maybe it's not you know, but it's 23 kilo. Ka. You know, like a dumbbell, 23 kilo, ka, bada hota, right? That is 1,000 moles of sodium, for example. But 1,000 moles, mein kitne atom honge? how many atoms would it have? If I do ever write, speak in Urdu, I'll also speak in English right after or before. So if you don't understand one language, you can ignore that because I'm going to repeat it in Urdu English also. So a thousand moles is how many atoms? Anybody? Because one mole is how many atoms? Can somebody tell me? One mole is how many atoms? Thank you, Saad. Absolutely. Because one mole is the Avogadro's number. So 1,000 moles is 1,000 times Avogadro's number. Absolutely. Yep. That's the Avogadro's number. But this time you want to have... So one mole is the Avogadro's 6 times 10 power 23, which is the Avogadro's constant. So 1,000 moles is 1,000 of that. So this is a number. Yes, it's a big number. But at least I know it, right? Scientists don't care about how big or small something is. They care about, do we know it? Can you find it? And then they just represent it. They're not worried about how big or small it is. It's just, let's, can we get it? We got it? Awesome. That's what we care about. That's all we care about. Can we find it? Can we know it? So, today's class is focused on this one term, molar mass, that connects mass and moles. Literally. And, you know, we are going to start using formulae. I don't want to use ratios all our lives. Because ratios are something we learn in class 6, 7, maybe math. And we graduate to algebra after that. And algebra makes our life easy. The reason why we invented algebra was to make arithmetic easy. To make solving things easy. So we're going to use algebra. We're going to use formulae. And there's a connection between the number of moles of something. Like, so there's a connection between the number of moles of sodium, the mass of sodium, and the molar mass. You see? How did we get the mass of a thousand moles of sodium? We got the mass of a thousand moles of sodium was, so mass of a thousand moles, so mass of a thousand moles was a thousand moles divided by the mass of one mole. Basically. That's how we got it. And so, this leads us to deriving a formula which simply states this, that the mass of any substance, pure substance, is the number of moles, which I will use n, a small n, into, okay, or I'll, let me write it first. Number of moles into its molar mass. And this becomes an automatic process to solving things because 
all we really want is one of these three variables mass molar mass and a, and so if i rearrange this because mass the mass the the letter we use for mass is m in physics some symbols we have recognized to represent so it doesn't have to be that but we like to use m small m small m for mass number of moles small n so we have dedicated small m in chemistry for mass meaning lowercase m and lowercase n for number of moles and uppercase or capital M to represent molar mass because we know we, this is what we do all right now we have this so if I if I say this that therefore M is equal to n into M and if I rearrange it to make n the subject then it becomes m over molar mass or mass over molar mass. So basically n is your number of moles. Okay, so number of moles. Mass and mo what is molar mass? Is the AR of element in grams. That's what a molar mass is. Or for compounds is the formula mass in grams, but we'll get to that in a minute. Yeah. AR is our way of writing relative atomic mass. AR is relative atomic mass. Also, you guys remember that our mass number also. Make sense so far? Yeah. Okay. Well, it's it's technically speaking, it's it's not really pure nucleon number because once you have isotopes, it's the average of all nucleons of the isotope. So tomorrow, I don't want you to say, hey, but you said nucleon number. It's not really technically nucleon number, but it might be easier to remember that. Now, for example, so this becomes an automatic thing to use. And it isn't just applied to at, uh, at elements. It can also apply to compounds. Now, so we use the term AR as relative atomic mass for atoms. And, but what about compounds? Atoms of elements, remember? So pure substances are either elements or compounds. So but when we have compounds, we know we have two kinds of compounds. We have ion, we have covalent and ionic, right? So for covalent, the term we use is molecular mass. Also, many times you use the symbol MR, molecular mass. Now, technically speaking, molecular mass can only be used for covalently bonded molecules not ionic. For ionic, the term is relative formula mass. So, for example, HCl's MR is the mass of H plus the mass of Cl, 36.5. And so that's the MR. But NaCl, because NaCl is, you will say formula mass of N. You will not say MR, but it's calculated the same way. What do you do? You just add the ARs of every single element in the formula. So 23 plus 35.5 is 58.5. So math is the same. Which is why you never probably, if anybody's ever used MR for ionic compounds, they've never been wrong. Because math will not be wrong if you do this, because it's the same math. Because MR is also the sum of each atom in a molecule. The formula mass is also the sum of each atom in the formula. But 
if for example your if I say the MR of HCL is 63.5 what I'm saying is HCL's molar mass so the molar mass of HCL is what 36.5 grams per mole the molar mass of NACL is 58.5 grams the reason why we read per mole is we, we mean to say one mole one mole yes ionic compound is not molecular yes that's what I said it is not molecular because achha, somebody said what is metallic well if I look at my previous case what is metallic bonding a compound or an element metallic bonding are elements so elements can leave we use the term atoms so elements are atomic mass so metals like sodium iron calcium the word he uses AR for them atomic mass ionic compounds formula mass covalent compounds molecular mass all right make sense Yeah. Done. All right. Hmm. Okay. Moving along. Okay, I keep turning around also because I'm just looking at all the different streams working right now. This is being live streamed to both Facebook and YouTube also. And maybe tomorrow, I don't know. I'm just trying out all, all of it out. But I think you Facebook live stream isn't as good as Woe, but you know, why not? Yeah? Anyways, so, yes, yes, Saad, absolutely. So AR is for elements. So AR is for elements and atoms of elements. Basically, it's not even for atoms, elements. It's for atoms of elements. Now there's a trick here. What if I say, Bhai, I want to talk about oxygen. You might say, well, oxygen's atom is, oxygen is an element, but it has an atom form and it has a molecule form. Remember? So, yeah, so, yeah, there is Zoom, it's Zoom right now on YouTube and Facebook and Noon just gets a link from YouTube. They can embed, yeah, funny, yeah. Anyways, moving along here, yeah. Hmm. So what we have is, so atoms and so LM atoms and molecules. So now the point being, I'm saying that when oxygen is an atom, its formula is O. When it's a molecule, its formula is O2. And so because it's an atom, the word is AR, is 16. Because O is 8 protons and mass number is 16. But the MR of oxygen is 16 times 2, 32. So you have to be careful. If you are saying molar mass of oxygen, by default, it's the molecular form. And that will be 32 grams per mole. Especially if they, word, if they use the word oxygen gas. Oxygen gas means the molecules. If they say oxygen atoms, it means the AR is 16. So the so language used also matters. All right? Yeah? Make sense? Hmm. Okay. Any questions so far? Hmm. 
Now, this tool is going to be used to solve a lot of questions, but today we're not looking at equations because that will be tomorrow. Today we're going to focus on how, why am I doing this? And it's a lot of, now you have to first ace the tools before you can easily apply them to questions. Like you should be able to solve things like the mass of a certain product form from a certain mass of reactant. But to, to solve all of that, you have to be very, very efficient in calculating the tools. The tools, the first tool I gave you was the formula. Number of moles is mass over molar mass. It's written as small m over capital M. So for example, I say, bhai, I, I have uh, 64 grams of oxygen gas. Okay, how many moles is this? That's the first thing you'll ever need to do if you ever need to use 24 gram, 64 grams of oxygen. Well, first of all, this is my head things. Well, if it's oxygen gas, it must be the molecule because it's gas. Oxygen, and this is something that you have to learn. Oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine exist at di and nitrogen exist as diatomic molecules. You have to learn this. That is data that you need to learn. Why? Because these are all covalently bonded, simple molecular structures. They're all diatomic. So when it says oxygen gas, what they mean is O2, right? So my question should be more specific. Well, the moles of molecules of oxygen, kitne hai? Well, if the formula is O2, therefore the MR of oxygen is two times 16. 32. Therefore, the molar mass, M being molar mass of oxygen. And obviously, once you learn the method completely, you can take shortcuts, but right now not. So molar mass of oxygen is 32 grams per mole. And then you take this formula that I'm highlighting. Okay. So Saad, wait. Now, so when I have this, I'm gonna move this up a little bit. So, why? Because I need a little more space. So when I say, okay, number of moles is mass over molar mass. Mass is 64 grams. I can write the unit if I want, or I can ignore the unit. Because when you go to A levels, you'll realize the units can also cancel out. They're like algebra. But you're left with, in this case, two moles. So it's two moles of O2 molecules. That's what I just found out. Because it was oxygen gas, it was a molecule, the MR was 32, and then plug into them into the formula, I get the moles of molecules, not moles of atoms, moles of molecules. Somebody said, like Saad was asking, well, how many, if they said how many, so Saad, they will not say 64 grams of oxygen atoms. They'll say 64 grams of oxygen, but how many moles of atoms there are? So there are two ways to do that. If one is just do it the same way as this, and you'll get two moles of oxygen molecules. But you know that each O has, O2 has two atoms. So if you have two moles, you have two times two. You can do that, or you can just directly use the AR. So since they only talk about atoms, so you want to have the AR, the AR of oxygen is 16, and then you use that. That's 64 grams over 16 grams. That's four moles. So depend, this, but this will be four moles of oxygen atoms, not molecules. Does it make sense? The class is quite glitchy compared to YouTube. I don't know, then Zoom problems maybe. I think it might be some Zoom problems then. So now I don't disagree with you. Absolutely. I don't disagree with you at all. 
Es ist dann auch ein YouTube. Ja. Malaika, the Curie Ascension was on Saturday on Noon Academy. Okay. So on Saturdays on Noon Academy, you can log in and ask your questions. Noon Academy, Pakistan. Yeah, Dilawar, I could do that there. Huh. If I do that here, wait, I can also do that here. But then you'll see my camera, not a screen share. That's the difference. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Anyways, moving along. Yeah, you can't see my video here. I'll figure that part out, but you can't see it right now. I'll see what I could do. Yeah. Yeah, you can't see it. Sorry. Hmm. All right, moving along. Can I move along? Okay. So now, basically, things like, why does this matter? Why does this matter? Because you might be asked tomorrow, well, I have, let's say, I have um, 90 grams of magnesium oxide. How many moles is that? And you'll have to do that. So now, well, you say magnesium oxide is an ionic compound. So I have something called formula mass. So I found the formula mass of magnesium oxide, which for that I need to know magnesium's mass and then oxygen's mass. Magnesium is 24, oxygen is 16, that's a 40. So formula mass is 40, which means molar mass is 40 grams per mole. I am becoming that anal about this stuff because without it being that, that uh, specific, you're not gonna get the answer, all right? Now, formula mass is this, molar mass is this. Then, what I have is this. So, for example, now what next? How do I find the mole? So you see, the goal is to find the formula mass, then the molar mass, and then plug in the formula, number of moles is mass over molar mass, simply that. So number of moles is ma mass is how much? Mass was given to us, 90 grams. And molar mass is 40 grams per mole. You can also just delete the units if you don't want to write the units. 90 over 40. What do I get 90 over 40? I think it's what, two point, somebody has that math? 2.25? Thank you. So this is 2.25 moles of MgO. Making, slowly making sense now? Because now you know why we do this, but, but you can also definitely, basically, uh, uh, start applying this now. This is making sense, I hope, maybe, yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe, yeah. Ta-da, 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 all right, ta-da, ta-da. Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. I am the better man of chemistry, okay. So, okay, let's take something else. Oh no, what, Abdul Moiz? What's happening now? You're making fun of me? No, Abdul Mahi said something. I don't know what he said. I have no idea what this is. Okay, so for example, somebody says, you know what? I have 10 grams of ethanol. Now let's go to more larger molecules. I have 10 grams of ethanol. Ethanol is C2H5OH. Now, first of all, so you know the trick is, regardless of if it's ionic or covalent, you have to do the same thing. Just make sure you find the formula mass. Even if it's covalent, you can find the formula mass. What is really formula mass? You just ma add the mass of each element. They're, f they're literally five hydrogens first, then one oxygen atom, and then one more hydrogen atom also. So basically, two times 12 is carbon, five for hydrogen, 16 for oxygen, and one again for hydrogen, which is 24 and 40, 46. Yes. 
So what that means is molar mass of ethanol is how much? 46 grams per mole. So if I want to know how many moles is 10 grams, basically the question was how many moles of ethanol is 10 grams? And again, there is a reason why we want to find moles because once we find moles, we know how many atoms there are. Our scientists know that. Okay, not me scientists, but chemists know that. So number of moles is mass over capital molar mass. So 10 over 46. Absolutely. And now you won't even get a full exact answer. And that's okay. Once you don't get full answers, what do you do? You round it off to three significant figures. So 1 0.21739. So 0.217 moles. So the unit for mole is MOL of ethanol and it doesn't just really need to find moles you can also use it to find mass you know you can be given the moles of something and say okay you know find the mass of this because math is was inventive math is the basis of all science Saad. it's not in every subject it's in every science math is not part of uh, history as much or uh, math is not part of, uh, it's part of social sciences and like economics and natural sciences. But it's not part of the English language, it's not part of art, I mean, yeah. There is art actually, yes. No, and it's also part of in social sciences. It's not part of humanities, it's part of social sciences, it's pa part of psychology, uh, studies, data, research, it's part of economics, that's a social science. Just, yes. So math is part of everything. Yeah, I know. Math is the underlying language of, it, it's the same regardless of which language you speak. So math is very important in life. Anyways, so it's not just for this. You can even say, okay, fine. Guys, I have 0.1 moles of NaOH. What mass is this? So basically you can use this formula, if you know any two things, you can find the third thing. So here, if you know the moles of something, and you can always find the molar mass of something by using its formula mass, therefore you can therefore find the mass of that something. Okay. So here, if I've been given 0.1 moles of NaOH, and I've been wanting to find its mass, remember, what do we have? What we have is, okay, first always you'll need formula mass. So formula mass of NaOH is mass of Na plus mass of O plus mass of H. In this case, this comes out to 40, which means the molar mass is how much? 40 grams per mole. And the number of moles is mass over molar mass. In this case, uh, 0.1 is the number of moles. That I know. Mass, I do not know. Molar mass is 40. So when I rearrange this, I get mass is 0.1 into 40. What is that? Four grams. All right, all right. Does it make sense? Does it make sense? So, that's the, and why does it matter? Because now you know that 4 grams of NaOH in the lab is 0.1 moles of NaOH in the lab. That's why we do this. We now know that 4 grams of NaOH is equal to, is the same amount mole value as 0.1 moles of NaOH. And why does that matter? Because I can now know I know how many particles is this. I can find that out. Right? Yep, John Snow wants my no John Snow can kiss my backside. Because you know, I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> Did it get recorded? I'm so sorry. Is that Superman? I don't know. It was I think I was trying to be Superman? Yes. 
I have no idea. Anyways, so the point is this. There's always a point and the point is that moles is that little gorgeous little unit that connects mass and number of atoms. That's why it is. I don't assume that Saad, you guys are as innocent as I think you guys are. Absolutely. You forget I was 16 and 15 once. And I remember a lot of my life and I was 16. So I don't assume that. I just pretend that. It, life is easier when we pretend. And just, just, you know, just uh, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Dun, 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 let it go. That one. I'll let it go. All right. So remember, moles is that beauty. And now you know why this is so beautiful. Moles is that beauty that connects mass. Because number of moles is mass over molar mass. But it also tells me Avogadro's number. Say, using Avogadro's number, it tells me how many atoms or molecules. That's, and that's all we care about, the number of atoms. Anyways. Anyways. This is going to mark the end of class today. And uh, I will see you guys tomorrow. All right? All right? Make sense? Yeah? No? Yeah, I'm thinking, uh, yeah, Sir Abu, let's see. Either him or me, let's make it a surprise. Let's see. Let's see. We'll toss a coin and see who comes tomorrow. You never know. I might surprise you. Unless, of course, you say, no, we love Abul and we miss him. <laughs> okay. Then you get him. Then you get Abul. Anyways, so I'm definitely going to head out from here. All right. Class is over now. Yes. All right. And uh, yeah. Ciao. Have fun. Bye-bye. A collab class? Yeah, one soon enough. When our platforms are sinking well, we'll do that. No, I'm not a Star Wars fan. Sorry. Actually, Abdul Moyes. <laughs> Anyways. Ciao. Bye-bye. Hasta la vista, baby. Yes. Um, mm -hmm.